Today we are going to make a key fob, or you might call it a dog tag. Let's get started. First, you're going to go to your toolbar on the left hand side, and you're going to select a rectangle tool. Then we're going to go to our point of origin, and we are going to click and release. So where the X, Y, and Z axis all meet, click and release and move your cursor out to the right. If you have that shape looking a little bit different, it may be kind of centered around your point of origin. You just need to hit either the control or the option key to toggle back and forth between those two different ways to draw a rectangle. So it's just in the one quadrant. I'm just going to let go of the mouse. I'm not clicking on anything. And I'm going to type in the dimensions, which are going to be 50 by 25. So I'm going to type in 50, 25 on the keyboard. And you'll see in the lower right-hand corner of my screen, those dimensions have popped up. Now, because I'm already in millimeters, my base template was millimeters, I don't have to put in mm. But if your base template is in feet, or maybe you're not sure what it's in, instead do this. Type 50 mm comma 25 mm. Hit enter. And now it's this small little thing down here because it's only 25 by 50 millimeters. This caricature temples here is 5 feet 9 inches tall. So something that is only an inch by 2 inches is going to be quite small. I'm going to delete temples and then zoom in to look at our project. As I rotate, we first are going to round over these corners. To round these corners, I want to put on a two millimeter radius. So I'm going to grab my tape measure tool. I'm going to click on the edge and release, moving my cursor in towards the center of the object, type in two, and then I'm going to hit enter. If you're not sure whether you're in millimeters, inches, feet, or meters, type in that MM and then hit enter. Do the same thing on the following three sides. I went on the wrong axis there. And at this point, I'm going to use circles to help draw my radius. On the left-hand side, we are going to go to where we had the rectangle tool. And the middle option is for the circle tool. Click on that. And as we zoom in here, I'm going to click where those two guides intersect. Each guide is two millimeters from the edge. And my second click is going to be either on the edge of where the guide hits one edge or the other. Doesn't matter which one it is. I can then use my erase tool to erase the parts that I don't want. Go ahead and do that on yours. At this point, we can put in the hole that we wanted. So I'm going to use my guide to click on the edge and come in 4.5 millimeters. And then I'm going to use my circle tool hovering on the edge to find the midpoint and inference that line in so I can click and release on the line. And I'm going to make the 
diameter six millimeters, which means the radius, what I'm calling for in the circle, is going to be three millimeters. Use your select tool to help you delete that center. And then your push-pull tool to click and raise that also three millimeters. At this point, you can add in your text. For that, we're going to use our 3D text tool. If you want things on multiple lines, you'll have to make sure that you hit enter here in this area to be able to do that. For the height, do at least six millimeters, at least six. And then for the text extrusion, so this is the, the height here is the height of the text. So if you have a capital letter X, it's going to be six millimeters tall. The text extrusion is how far is it coming out from the surface. In this case, I want it to come out between one and two millimeters. I'm going to go out two millimeters and select OK. Make sure that you are on the face. So you can see that it says where my cursor is on face. That's important to have. And then I can choose where I want that to be. I then have three tools that I can modify that. The move tool can move it. Make sure you grab the bottom corner here, the bottom corner of the move tool. Then you can also use the rotate tool if you needed to rotate this. Make sure it's on that face, on that edge there. And you could spin this around if you wanted. I don't want to, so I'm going to hit the escape key. And the third option is to scale this. So because the object was selected and I hit the scale tool, I can do everything proportionally by going in the corner, or I can pull it out only in certain directions if I wanted to stretch this one way or the other. But just make sure when you do this, you're using that middle handle to pull. When you're finished, we're going to group everything together. So you grab your Select tool, select it all, right-click, and make group. So I know this may have seemed fast, but this video was designed for those students who have been working in class but maybe missed a day um, when we went over this in class, and so this is an opportunity for them to be able to catch up. Okay. At this point, you need to save your file. Make sure you save your file in your SketchUp folder. And then you'll need to export it. So after it's saved, you'll hit the menu icon, choose Export, and export that as an STL. It's this file, the STL file, that you want to upload to the Dropbox of whatever color you choose so that you can get that printed on that 3D printer. If you have any questions, send me an email or ask me in class. Good job.